Building a Stuart 504 Boiler Plant Part 18 Constructing the Countershaft Support Thinking about the Generator Mounting and Waterproofing the Wooden Parts In the last episode I applied another coat of polyurethane varnish to the planks on top of the baseboard and now 24 hours later the polyurethane varnish is dry and now it's time to rub it down in preparation for the third and final coat and to do this I'm using some 400 grit wet or dry sandpaper and what this sandpaper does really is scratches the top surface and this provides a very good key for the next coat. A good friend of mine builds electric guitars and these are really beautiful things and the finish that he gets on the varnish is just, well, ridiculously good. And the thing that surprised me was the number of coats of varnish that he actually applies to the guitars and it's a lot more than three coats, more like 23. But relax, I'm not going to continuously make videos about varnishing pieces of wood. It's time to look at the underside, and when I turn the piece of wood over you can clearly see the hardwood supports, and these fit into the baseboard and locate the top board on the bottom board so it can't slide about or move. What I'm doing at the moment is opening a tin of varnish that I had left over from a job that I did in the house, and it's the strangest stuff. It's a sort of a wood-stained type water-based varnish, but it's grey, pretty close to battleship grey really. I used it originally to stain a piece of pine upon which my broadband router now rests in the cloakroom area of my house. And when I first opened the tin I thought well this can't work, it's grey. But it actually does. I don't like the stuff so I'm never going to use it for anything else so I thought well it's going to be ideal as a base coat to waterproof the underside of this board. I'm actually going to paint this board. As I'm painting this grey stuff onto the wood, as you can see the wood is starting to go brown. But I don't like the look of it. And I'd just like to say that I do not recommend water-based varnishes, whether they be clear or self-coloured. I prefer the spirit type. So while this strange grey paint is going brown, it's time to look at the mountings in the bottom part for the lay shaft that will drive the generator. It's most important to think ahead when doing a job like this, and the reason I have that piece of hardwood is so that I can gauge where the piece of wood needs to be because don't forget, you've just seen me paint the underside of the board, and all the way around is a piece of hardwood, and if I don't make allowances for the fact that that is there, then when I try and put the top on, it won't fit. This is my floor mounting pillar drill, that I never actually got round to fastening to the floor, that's why it wobbles about. The good thing about floor mounting pillar drills, is you can get a large piece of wood, or metal, underneath the drill, and still drill the hole accurately. So what I did was drop the table right down to the bottom and that allowed me to hold the base edge on so I can drill the holes in the top. And these two heavy duty spring clamps are holding the inner piece of wood to the outer piece of wood. So as I drill the hole it goes through both pieces of wood in exactly the same place. I'm not going through in one go, I need this to be half an inch in diameter. So I'm using three drills to get up to half an inch. but. The very final drill is just under half an inch, one imperial size under, and that's so I can use a reamer to get the finished size. And here's the reamer going through. This will give me an accurate half an inch diameter hole in the wood. When I went to the company where I normally buy my bearings, I was given a choice of either cheap ones or expensive ones, and I bought expensive ones for the princely sum of seven pounds each. Back on the bench now, you can see the principle. Here's the hole that I've drilled all the way through the two pieces of wood, and here I'm removing the spring clamps. This, by the way, is very much a prototype, so don't be too scathing if you don't like the way I'm doing it. It will be fine when it's finished. And this clip, I think, shows the general idea of what I'm trying to do. There'll be a quarter inch stainless steel shaft running in quality ball racers, and on this shaft, inside the base, will be fitted the larger of the two tooth belt pulleys and the smaller of the tooth belt pulleys will be fastened to this motor, which will be on an adjustable sliding mount. The mount of course needs to be adjustable, so I can set the correct belt tension between the two tooth belt pulleys. All the way round on the top edge of this soft wood will be a hardwood capping, pretty much like this, but a bit smaller. The so-called 2 by one softwood that I use, which is really a metric equivalent, is a little bit small for the motor mount, so I could, I suppose, grind off some of the motor mount, but I don't want to do that. I think that using hardwood cappings all the way round is a better solution. This piece of mahogany from my box of random pieces of mahogany is 3 16ths of an inch thick. And once this mahogany is cut to the correct size, 
and stuck on top of the softwood all the way around, it will look the part and it will do the job. But before I get to that bit, I have to make sure that everything aligns. And what better to use as an alignment tool, the reamer that cut the hole. So I've just pushed the reamer through the outer hole and it's a nice tight fit, which is just how I need it. And I can now sit the middle piece on the other end of the reamer and mark the position on the baseboard to drill a couple of holes so I can screw this piece of wood where it needs to go. This bit is speeded up to avoid anyone going into a coma. I'm drilling two holes on the marks. Then underneath, I use a countersink to countersink the holes like this. And then, with the inner bearing mounting, which is a small piece of wood, held in position on the reamer at the other side of the board, I'm drilling through with a pilot drill. After which, using a suitable pair of wood screws, I can screw the softwood block to the main baseboard. Because there are only two screws to screw into the wood, I thought it was a waste of time taking the time to fit the screwdriver bit into my electric drill. So instead, I'm using a screwdriver, but not just any screwdriver, this is a Barco screwdriver. It's part of a full set that was sent to me by a very kind viewer in Sweden. The entire screwdriver set sits in a metal pot behind the workbench, so you see it in most of the videos. All of the screwdrivers have a very distinctive grey and black handle. And in no time at all, without any damage to the head of the screw, they're securely fitted in position underneath the baseboard. Once a piece of wood was securely screwed in position, I removed the reamer, and now I'm using a piece of half inch diameter silver steel to just verify the alignment, and it's okay. It's nice and tight, which is what I want it to be, because the ball racers are going to push into these holes, and I don't want them moving about. I'll be making some brass retainers for each side, which will serve two purposes. The main purpose being to hold the bearings in position, and also they will look pretty good, because the outer one is going to be visible on the finished plant. So I'm really happy with the alignment, I don't think there's going to be any problems here, and as an extra belt and braces approach, I'm now applying some cyanoacrylate adhesive, or CA glue, or super glue, around the edge of the inner piece of wood to hold it in position. I couldn't quite get the tip of the super glue bottle into position here, so I used a screwdriver to spread the super glue where I needed it to be. After giving the plank part of the baseboard the final coat of varnish, I had some left over, so I thought, well, I won't waste it, and I'm using it inside the bottom part of the baseboard. You can never have too much waterproofing and oilproofing where steam engines are concerned. And I'll probably also paint this black before I finish the job and assemble everything. And I'll show that briefly before final assembly. But for the moment, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.